What is up, my little pretties? It's your mistress, the Shadow Lioness or Queen of Lions, whatever you guys prefer to call me. And welcome back to another episode of Shadows and Pretties. I hope you all had a really good Easter, which I know I did. So if you guys had a good Easter, feel free to let me know in the comments below because I would really like to hear, well, what you have to say about your Easter. Like, was it good? Was it bad? Was it not great? Was it okay? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Now that Easter is finished, until next year, I am starting it off by, this is episode 71 of Shadows and Pretties. Now, I kind of have been debating on if I should talk about this movie or do something else. And I've been kind of thinking, debating on if I should talk about this movie. Now, this is a Muppet movie that today I am going to be talking about. So... I decided to go right ahead and, well, say this because, you know, I kind of wanted to do this movie because for a while. So this is episode 71, um, yeah, of Shadows and Pretty. So today I am going to be talking about the Muppets Wizard of Oz. Yeah, the Muppets version of Wizard of Oz, not, you know, the original one or anything like that because that was the very first episode I've ever done. And to be honest, I actually really like this a lot. So with that being the case and with that being said, um, yeah, let me begin with the plot of this movie. Now, this is like a musical fantasy for television. It's like a TV um, film that was made in 2005 and it was directed by Kirk R. R. Thatcher, the second film to be made called in the television film The Muffets franchise. So this stars, you know, Ashanti, Jeffrey Tem. Tambo, Quentin Tarantino, David Alan Greer, Queen Latifah, Steve Eve Wiltemer, Bear, and a bunch of other, you know, actors in this movie. Even the ones who had played um certain Muppet characters have um, you know, and the voices there are just amazing. So this movie, on the other hand, I was kinda hesitant to talk about it because there was a lot of backlash I got I've seen from, you know, people who have seen this movie. So, now this is basically the adapt... This movie does not, um... This movie does, is not an adaptation of the MGM's movie of The Wizard of Oz. No, I was expecting that, but unfortunately we got the adaptation of the 1900 novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, by Frank Albaum. Now, the story follows Dorothy Gale, who works at Aunt Am's Diner, yeah, that did not happen in the original story. I think they just wanted to spice some things up. But the dreams of becoming a singer or somewhere beyond her small town in Kansas is swept by a tornado in her trailer home with her pet, Pron Toto. She lands in Oz and, well, embraces her journey to a wizard to make her dreams come true. So, of course, right after Walt Disney brought the rights of the Muppets franchise in 2004, pre-production then took place throughout February of 2004, at the principal photography graphy, and begin to seven months later. ABC made several changes to the uh, script once it was written, automatically adapt the roles and plots elements from Vaughn's original novel, rather than, well, the MGM um, 1939-9 movie musical film of The Wizard of Oz. Now, The Muppets' Wizard of Oz became, became a musical, including five new songs, which was commenced by Michael Giacchino, and it's the first Muppet film throughout the involvement of veteran performer J Jerry Nelson since following his 2004 retirement from physical performing. Now, his characters of, of Lou Zealand and, 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 of course, Floyd Piper, Pepper, and who were retrospectively performed by Bill Baratia and John Kennedy. Now, of course... Or is with that being the case, and with that being said, they actually had some, well, some actually some, you know, a lot of interesting stuff that happened throughout this film. So, if you guys have not seen this movie, you can see it if you want to. Now, I am just going to say right now, if you don't want me to spoil this, that I highly recommend you, you know, get off of this. So, yeah, with that being the case, and with that being said... I'm going to sit there and basically explain, you know, what the movie is about. But before then, 
The Wizard of Oz Muppets version premiered on April 27th, 2005 at the Tribeca Film Festival, which was made for its television premiere on ABC on May 20th of 2005. In the final ABC movie of the week, the film received a mix of negative reviews from critics who felt that the film was too mature for young audiences, that cameos and popular culture references were unnecessary. So it's kind of why a lot of people really backlash at this movie. So, yeah. So, of course, an orphan teenage girl named Dorothy, or Shanti, I'm just going to call her Dorothy, is living in a trailer park in Kansas with her Aunt Am and Uncle Henry, who own a diner. Yeah, that never happened in, like, the movie. I think they just want to, well, make more, well, money by, you know, at which to Dorothy works works for a room on, and board, and of course her dream of becoming a singer is slim. But when they're waiting for some truckers girls to arrive, uh, Dorothy overhears that the Muppets are conducting a cross country show called Star Hunt and are looking for a backup singer. So Aunt Em, however, disapproves. But with Uncle Henry's best wishes, she goes to the audition. However, the Muppets are about about to end the audition, and Dorothy only manages them to give him a demo CD so that she created beforehand. So, of course, she returned home as civil defense and sirens and go sounds as a tornado is heading their way towards Dorothy's trailer park, which Anne, Em, and Uncle Henry run to the country storm shelter for safety. Dorothy hurries back to her family's mobile hall to go get her Toto, her pet prawn. No, it's not a shrimp. Prawn and shrimp are basically different things. Or yet again, they might be the same. I, I I don't know. Now, she does make it, does not make it out in time, and the two are swept away by a tornado, crosses the vast fields of Kansas. So when Dorothy climbs out of the record, she finds that Tor Toto or Peppy the King Prong can talk, and that she is no longer in Kansas. So when Dorothy and Toto discover that they're in Munchkin Land, a small all part of the vast of Land of Oz, after discussing her situation with the town's people, the Munchkins, played by Rizzo the Rat, and the other rats, she also learned that the land's ruler was the wizard and that she has and has the power to grant wish of becoming a famous singer. She meets the good witch in the north, a.k.a. Miss Piggy. And yes, Miss Piggy plays all the witches in this. I don't know why, but she does. And receives them some magic silver shoes from the wicked witch of the east. But however, the witch of the north's sister, who is killed when Dorothy's trailer fell on her, Soon after, she remarks on the journey with Toto on the yellow brick road to meet the wizard, who gives the, gets to Emerald City, in the capital of Oz. Now, on her journey, she meets Kermit, who plays as the Scarecrow, uh, Tin Man, who was played by Gonzo, and Fozzie Bear, who plays as the Lion, and who are also seeking to, to see the wizard to give him a brain, heart, and courage, respectively. So the group meets at various obstacles involving a deep gorge, where... Where, of course, Stelter and Waldorf, the Calda critics, who are hecking them by and hecking them, so they cross them. That did not, the Calda critics, um, yeah, they were not, they didn't exist in the movie, the Wizard of Oz one, or the, well, the story. And they began trying to, you know, insult them and stuff like that. And a poppy filled club run by Clifford, who, not Clifford the Big Red Dog. It's a different Clifford who nearly puts them to sleep. But when they arrived at Emerald City for me and the wizard, Dorothy and her friends were sent to retrieve the Wicked Witch of the West's magic eye. No, not her broomstick or anything like that, like in the movie, her magic eye. A tool that she uses to see anything that desires a land of Oz. Now, in this one, she doesn't use a crystal ball or anything like that, like in the original movie where she sat there and did that. It's this one that they did a lot of changing. So I guess this is actually one of the reasons why a lot of people really didn't like this was because of that. So the group assumes, uh, assumes that completing this task will result in granting their wishes. The Wicked Witch of the West sees them coming and consults for her pet Fufu and her henchman Johnny Fama. I think that's how you spelled. So when the Wicked Witch of the West plans to have her pack of man wolves and a flock of crows of despair... Swarm of angry bees, vicious squirrels, or a group of bloodthirsty cockatoos to do them away. Johnny tells them that they that they the work for her were unavailable for various reasons. So that unfortunately forces her to resort by using her bike magic bike care cap and call the flying monkeys, played by certain Muppets. So, yeah, certain Muppets 
and of course, to deal with them. So the Witch and Flying Monkeys eventually capture Dorothy, Toto, and the Lion, while Scarecrow and Tin Man are dismantled by the Flying Monkeys. Now, but in, you know, the original movie, Dorothy's trying to go and save Dorothy and Toto, but in this one, they, they're, they don't. So after being threatened to be killed by her, Toto calls up the Munchkins, who sets him and Dorothy free, and hold up the witch. However, it there is like an unnecessary scene in this, so I'm just gonna say right now. It cuts to a way a scene where Quentin Tarantino is kind of like having a meeting with Kermit, discussing the things how Dorothy could defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. However, Tarantino's ideas seem to be too expensive and too violent for a Muppet movie, so they agree for Dorothy to do a powerful kick on the witch. Now, I think the scene with Quentin Tarantino in this movie was kind of unnecessary. I wasn't really a fan of that part. But I don't... I have to say, Quentin Tarantino is a pretty good actor. Not gonna lie, but... With with his scene right here, it's just really unnecessary for a Muppet film. Not trying to sound like a hypocrite, but it's the honest truth. So, so of course, with that being said, it's cut back to the movie. Dorothy kicks the Wicked Witch into her own bottled water bath, which contains... Haynes tap water, which she is severely allergic. Angel Marie then admits that they've filled the bottles, water bottles with tap water to restock on them. So this actually caused the Wicked Witch to melt as well. They, about the witch is dead. Yeah, the witch is basically melts just like the movie. And Dorothy finds the magic guy flowing in the tub and grabs it. So Dorothy gains control of the flying monkeys and giving back the group back their biker's cap to Salmena. And of course, as she and the Scarecrow and the Tin Man were rebuilt by the Flying Monkeys. When they traveled back to Emerald City, their wishes were granted. When all of the storms in Wizard's room, they discovered that the Hollywood effects on stage that can grant their wishes. So Dorothy eventually becomes a singer in Land of Oz, but then she realizes that she really wants to go back home to be with her family. After traveling back to Munchkinland, she meets Glinda, the Good Witch of the South, now, she's the Good Witch of the North in the, well, Wizard of Oz movie, the 1939 one, who tells her that if she clicks her heels three times, she'll be able to go anywhere she desires, and portrayed it as though the Good Witch of the North said to get to Emerald City. She does so by saying, take home to Aunt Em. Of course, Dorothy uses her slippers and goes back, eventually gets back to Kansas to her surprise. She finds out that Kermit was looking for her, saying that she had the best voice that they heard on stretch and they have chosen in the star hunt so Dorothy having to be reunited with her aunt and uncle and feeling that she is not ready to leave Kansas to become a real star rejects but Aunt Sam says that she can go with the Muppets to be a star and in a much even bigger surprise she and the Muppets end the film sing good life on television at the Muppet Theater so that is basically well the Muppets Wizard of Oz so with that being said and with that being the case I am gonna say right now when I first saw this movie, I obviously was really well made in detail. There was a lot of great concept. And I definitely have to say that I really do like how well the whole, you know, concept was. I know it was a little bit interest I know it was a little bit different at certain parts that didn't really make sense, but it's still a pretty good pretty good concept when you come to think of it. So when I first saw this movie, I kinda have mixed feelings about it, like there were parts of it that I did like, and there was parts of the movie that I did not like. So, with that being said, in the extended version, there is, like, this, um, little makeover, um, part of the movie that appears in a brief cameo. When Dorothy first comes out of the magic makeover machine, Kelly Osborne appears, only for at least a brief second, but, you know, that was just an extended edition. Now, to conclude this movie... This movie was not perfect. I am just going to say that now. I can understand why a lot of people really bashed it. Is because there was some parts of it that really just wasn't necessary and all that. So it was actually one of the biggest reasons why, you know, a lot of people really... This movie got a lot of backlash from, you know, a lot of people. Now, I watched a couple reviews of this movie and they say the exact same thing. Oh, this movie is not that great because of this, because of that. You know, I could respect their opinions. Like, if you want to state your opinion on, well, on this movie, like, if you don't like this movie, that's totally fine because I can respect your opinion if you, well, if you don't like this movie, people, I can respect your opinion. To me, 
this movie was all right. It wasn't perfect. There were flaws with it that I could definitely say that um that this movie um could do better. So what could be done to do this movie better is maybe if they not include too many unnecessary scenes and they basically, you know, try and make the plot more understandable and interesting by the minute. Like, that's how I would put it if I were to do something like this. Now, yet again, I'm not trying to sound like a hypocrite or anything like that. If you like this movie, that is perfectly okay. You can like this movie if you want to. You could dislike it. It really depends because, you know, this is just my opinion. So, so with that being the case and with that being said, um, yeah. Now, of course, the, the acting was pretty good for the Muppets. And, of course, they have, um, you know, the human casts, which did pretty decent and really well done. So, of course, with that being said and with that being the case, um, The Muppets Wizard of Oz, after it was premiered, was on VHS at one point, and then it was on, well, all DVD, Region 1, and of course, or just with a bunch of others, they all, of course, added, you know, the extended version in the U.S., and they had an anniversary edition outside the U.S., which it extended at least contains 20 minutes of the footage cut from the feature film, Queen of footage of Kelly Osborne and Quinta Tarantino cameos. Of course, they had a scene about an interview with the Quentin Tarantino blooper reel, behind the scenes and looking at the film with Pepe the Prawn, and they even had a lot of concept about this. Now, now with that being said, there what the Muppets Wizard of Oz had some merchandise such as plush dolls, but not really, really too much. Now, of course, a lot of people really didn't like this movie. So, I'm going to say this right now. It kind of mixed a review, some critics and all that. So, with that being said, I could definitely say this movie was actually okay. There were still a couple flaws with it, but yeah. So, in my opinion, if I have to give this a rain, I would rate it a 6 out of 10. The reason why I'm giving this movie a 6 out of 10 was because it was alright for what it is. Not the best Muppet movie I've seen, but I have seen some other... Muppet movies that did pretty good. So anyways, with that being the case and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this um, review. Now, if you happen to like um, Muppets Wizard of Oz, I can respect your opinion. If you, I can handle your opinion if you, don't, if you like the movie. If you don't like this movie, I can respect your opinion too, as we have our own, own opinions regards to these movies. So we can like something, we can not like something, depending on, you know, who we are. And, you know, it's everyone's opinion. So, anyways, with that being the case, and with that being said, what did you guys think about this movie? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what would you have done person to help make this movie a lot better? If you let me know what your, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell because... You will get notified to when I upload if you ring the bell for notification. So as always, I'll be catch you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Shaz and Praise. And as always, I'll see you next time.